Hi, I'm Marion Landry, the Technical Marketing Specialist for 3ds Max Design. But today I'm here to talk to you about Showcase and how to add realism into your presentation by creating ambient shadow and few tips and tricks around that. When working with Showcase, one thing that is really nice and will add realism is ambient shadow. Right now I have a model that I've loaded from a DWG file and I have applied few material on it. Okay, it's quite basic for now, but some objects look like they are floating. So you see here, it's really hard to understand where these two objects are meeting. Now I have loaded two different scenes to compare and show you the difference. The, my second scene here do have ambient shadow and the reason why it's much easier to understand is because there is some sort of dark shadow that is represented where these two objects meet. To help you understand, I'm going to display only the ambient shadow. So I'm going to go ahead in the scene menu, show ambient shadow only, and you'll see what the ambient shadow is all about. So you see that it's creating area of darkness where there's where the models are meeting. So this is happening in real life. Basically, is when two objects are meeting, it creates a darkness, not necessarily a shadow that is created from a sun or a source of light, but a shadow that is created from the proximity of two objects. So if I go back to my original scene, obviously there's no ambient shadow that is calculated in this scene. So first I'm going to select the object that I want ambient shadow on. So I'm going to select all of my objects. Now that I think about this, I don't want all my objects selected because ambient shadow do not exist on transparency objects. So where there's glass, there's no ambient shadow. So let's just select the object that I want ambient shadow to be calculated on. Okay, so with all the objects selected that I want ambient shadow on, let's go ahead and create ambient shadow. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to go ahead and do a preview quality, which is much faster to calculate. So it's going to go ahead and create the ambient shadow calculation and show me the results. Now, the result is not really what I'm expecting. If I'm comparing both scene, this is not really what I want. What is happening here? And it's all black. So basically, in order to create an accurate ambient shadow, your face's orientation is quite important, which is a concept that is not really important in AutoCAD. So when I created my object in AutoCAD, the face orientation did not really um, make any difference. But here in Showcase, it does. So to solve this problem, I'm going to remove the ambient shadow. And I'm going to press the F2 key and this is showing me basically the orientation of my faces. So there's, so the faces that you see in gray are well oriented and everything that is yellow is facing the wrong way. So by selecting my faces and pressing F3, I will be able to rotate these faces to the correct orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and examine my model and really or and really turn the faces in the correct orientation to make sure that my ambient shadow is correctly calculated. Now, don't forget to inspect the interior of your model as well. As you can see here, there's a couple of face orientation. Now, the glass is only one polygon. So, so from the interior, it's going to look like the orientation is not correct. But keep in mind that you are going to look at your model from the outside. So it's the outside that really matters. So now that my model is clean, so you see here that all the faces are facing the correct orientation. I can now leave this mode by pressing F2 again. Now, don't forget that I am still in a mode of um, showing the ambient occlusion only. And now there's no ambient occlusion calculated. So I'm going to go ahead and reselect my objects. In order to deselect some object, you can press the control key to deselect certain object in your scene. And I'm going to go ahead and recalculate it, the uh, create ambient shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and use the fast quality again, just for the purpose of this demonstration. I want a fast uh, ambient occlusion. But for a final presentation, I would definitely use uh, higher quality, for uh, example, the exterior quality, which renders a lot slower, but that gives me more refined result without this little noise that you'll see in this really fast ambient shadow. So now I have a much nicer result. As you can see here, it is really easy to understand uh, these objects that are showing. And now I'm, in on, I'm still in the mode of showing only, only the ambient shadow. Now the difference in between the fast calculation, you can see there's a little bit of noise here where the eye quality will give me a really nice and smooth uh, calculation. 
And if I go back to showing not only the ambient shadow, but the object with the material on, you'll see that the objects are a lot easier to understand. And now it's giving me a much nicer result and something that is a lot more realistic. So if we go to a nicer ambient shadow calculation and maybe drop a um, nicer environment, for this object, then you'll see that the realism of this object is a lot nicer now with the ambient shadow. And it's giving me the little edge uh, that I need and the realism in order to understand really quickly my model, even though if the model has only simple white material, that could be hard to identify without the ambient shadow. So ambient shadow definitely adds realism will give you that little edge extra on your model, but keep in mind that your face orientation is really important to calculate an accurate ambient shadow.